Hey guys, even here, and since 2019 is almost over and we did the decade, 2010s are coming to their end. Hold on, wait, what's with the music? I'm not trying to make you cry. Let's try something else. I wanted to make a top 5 best, most interesting, top moments in bodybuilding from the 2010s, from an era. Just like we had 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, now we have 2010s and this era is over. So, what are the top 5 moments that will always be the reminiscent of the 2010s? Let's go with the moment number 5. Phil Heath winning 2011 Mr. Olympia. This is early 2010s, the beginning of this decade. The beginning of Phil Heath era, we can call it that because he won 6 more and maybe even more next decade. He took the title from Jay Cutler but Jay gave us an amazing speech. He was so happy that actually Phil won because he was his friend at the time. We got a new Mr. Olympia, somebody who brought back the conditioning with that crazy freaky wow factor, somebody with the most insanely looking muscle bellies. Nobody had this kind of pop, this kind of 3D look. This is something we saw only in cartoons, basically. So this is the closest to that cartoon character type of uh, physique. Not Ronnie Coleman, this. This. Who was better bodybuilder? Ronnie Coleman, but this was an insane physique. Unreal. Unreal. It looked like it was drawn with a pencil. It didn't look real. This was crazy 3D, bubbly, but also very, very conditioned look, very dry. Look at the glutes and the hamstrings are here and the lower back, the completeness of the physique was amazing. It was just a flowing perfectly, no flaws, basically perfection. His stomach was in check back then, his back was so developed and his waist was so small that you couldn't even notice the, the lack of the shoulder width. So basically an amazing physique, pretty much perfect. Not that you can never get perfect in bodybuilding, but the closest thing to it so far. Phil Heath set new standards that night, that year, 2011. So I find this one of the most memorable moments from the past decade. It was a great start for 2010s in bodybuilding. And hopefully the next decade may start a similar way. Phil Heath comes back. How about that? Will we ever see him like this? Like he was in 2011? Probably not, probably not, but this is unarguably one of the most impressive moments in bodybuilding history and most certainly in 2010s. Alright, so since it is Phil Heath's era, basically you can call 2010s that, we're gonna mention Phil Heath a couple of times. So, one of the most interesting parts of 2010s was the early 2010s and Kai versus Phil rivalry. Even though they are smiling right here, these guys hated each other's guts. They hit each other's guts, probably literally. And uh, the audience liked that. The audience preferred Kai Green, mainly because of that role that he had in the Generation Iron movie. That movie was half acting, and Phil was pretty arrogant and, and cocky in person. And people didn't really like that very much. He was the champion, so he had the right to be that, but it was uh, a little bit too much sometimes. This that you're watching right now is only one of the examples where their rivalry escalated. They didn't like each other, they were very very close, they hated each other actually, but that's what made them such a good competitors. Because they were always so close and they always had to push the envelope extra hard just in case. Their rivalry isn't only one moment, but a couple of them, but I'm saving the best one for the end. Before we get to that one, let me play this one first. Making excuses, talking about you're the only, you think you're the only person that has ever excuses. gone through something in your Making life. Excuses. Everybody knows Making your excuses. stories. Yes. Making excuses. Yes. Yes. You know nothing of what you're talking. You know nothing of what you're talking about. You know nothing of what you're talking about. You know nothing about me, Kai. And that's your problem. You know that's my problem. Yes. I have no problem with yeah. that. Knowing everything about you. I'm How do you know, know everything about this? This is the type of I'm class that we have with high grade people. I'm here to really try to talk about, about that late father and this is How what I deal with. This, this is, is the type of guy that wants to about represent bodybuilding. I was out there. It's not about not respecting the champion. Listen, man, 2013 was 2013. 2014, every man came here to do their best, to win. Now, if that's, if you want to, if you want to rest on your laurels for the past, and you want everybody to hold hands and sing Negro spirituals with you for the past, that's cool. This guy has 
And so we come to the final moment where it escalated the most. They almost got in a fist fight. Look at this. It almost turned to a fist fight. I know it wouldn't be a great thing for the sport, but it would be a great thing for the fans. I'm sure all of you right here watching this would love to see that fight. It would be amazing. On the stage, it would be, it would be embarrassing for Mr. Olympia and for the runner-up to fight, <laughs> to have a fist fight on the stage, but it would be hilarious and I would love that. All right, next up, we have Kevin Leveroni come back in 2016. 2016 was a very interesting year. We had a couple of interesting announcements. And this one was great. I loved it. Kevin Leveroni, after, I don't know how many, 15 years of retirement, coming back and competing and actually looking great. At least here, in the, in the press conference, later on the stage, it wasn't that great because of the legs. You cannot see legs here, but upper body was pretty good, especially front part. Back wasn't really that great. It never really was his strongest body part, but, you know, in 2016 wasn't... Um, wasn't good, but from the front, his arms, his chest, his, his shoulders looked really good. And um, it was an amazing moment for bodybuilding because I think a lot of new people got involved in the bodybuilding. A lot of them knew about Kevin Leveroni, but wasn't really uh, so much into modern bodybuilding. And then they started following his prep. Along the way, they started following bodybuilding, basically. So it was a very exciting time for bodybuilding. It was needed at that time. Something was necessary to, to increase the attention of the public, and Kevin Leveroni did just that during the prep. But when the competition came, it wasn't really what we were hoping for. A lot of people actually had Kevin winning the Mr. Olympia, but he was uh, not even close to doing that, uh, especially because of the legs. Upper body too, I mean, he was old. He didn't train for 15 years or something, and then he prepped for like 6 months. It just wasn't enough. If he never stopped training, it could have been something better than this. But still, all the time, while he was prepping, while he was teasing us, there were a couple of photos, sometimes, and, you know, usually his upper body, front body photos. We expected a lot, and so it was an exciting time for bodybuilding, and still, the legend, the Hall of Famer, Kevin Leveroni, made a comeback. It was amazing because everybody is talking about the 90s as the golden era of bodybuilding, as the top, the pinnacle of the bodybuilding. And I agree that it was. But I was too young. I was born in 1995. And so are many of you guys. So we had a chance to see one of those guys on the stage in our era. Was it disappointing a little bit? Yeah, it was. But at least it happened. As I said, 2016 was the year of many pleasant surprises or announcements. I believe Classic Physique was announced in 2015, but the first time it was held at the Mr. Olympia was 2016. Uh, it happened because Louis Marco used to make videos about it, and he said in one video, if you guys remember, why doesn't IBB create a physique division, Classic Physique division, because everybody wants to see the Classic Physique, the Golden Era physiques. And it happened. It literally happened like a, a couple of days or weeks after he said that. I'm sure many of you don't remember that, but that's how it happened. That's how it went down. Louis Marco had a huge influence on bodybuilding industry back in the day. He always had a bunch of views. He made bodybuilding exciting. He made me learn so much about bodybuilding history. I would probably never get so deep into bodybuilding if there wasn't for him. He made bodybuilding big on social media, on YouTube. And he basically uh, was a huge part of creation of this division, which was a huge hope for myself, because I personally know that I will never be a good open bodybuilder, and so many other people. So once it happened, many men's physique competitors who didn't really like men's physique as a division came to the classic. Many open bodybuilders who didn't like open that much or who weren't the best fit for it came into classic. Apparently, bodybuilders did much better than the men's physique guys, but anyways... It was a great refreshment. It was a great hope for so many bodybuilders. Bodybuilding became much more available for everybody. When I heard about it, I literally jumped out of a chair because I knew this is my future. And so many other people did the same thing. It was amazing, amazing moment for the fitness and bodybuilding industry. But not necessarily the best bodybuilding moment because this is a physique division. It isn't exactly bodybuilding division, but still these guys are bodybuilders. They just have the, the weight cap, a different type of posing and different uh, trunks. But it's basically bodybuilding. Just as the name says it, classic bodybuilding or classic physique. Over the past four years since it was created, it's changed a lot. It evolved a lot. 
we got a lot of new, much more gifted competitors today than we had four years ago, and it is yet to develop, to grow. It's still very, very young division. And I believe if it keeps growing and progressing and evolving, it has a potential to overcome, to surpass bodybuilding, open bodybuilding. It's a bold statement. It may never happen, but we'll see in 10, 20, 30 years or something. I made a video about this. If you want to check it out, go back and find it. And so we come to the final, the last moment in this top five list of mine. Probably the most exciting one and absolutely unexpected. I watched the Mr. Olympia live stream that night. And, you know, I live in Serbia, so it's a different time zone. It was around uh, 6 or 7 a.m. and I stayed awake all night. And I was watching this Mr. Olympia and I was thinking, it's going to be the same thing as every year. Phil will win. And so I went to sleep. I didn't even watch the, till the end. I woke up tomorrow. I turned my Instagram immediately. And the first thing I saw was your new Mr. Olympia, Sean Roden. I was amazed. I was emotional. I couldn't believe it. It happened finally. I loved Phil Heath. I was a huge Phil Heath fan. But at a certain point, it became really boring because I started following bodybuilding at around the time when he became the Mr. Olympian. Every single year I watched it, he would win. So I was really bored at the time. And uh, then in 2018, something finally happened. Sean came in shape. Phil couldn't control his stomach at all. And that was enough for Phil to lose, for Sean to win. Very deservedly so. I did not expect the judges to penalize his uh, stomach, his midsection, his gut this year, as they didn't the years prior. But this year he was also off with the posing, with the conditioning a little bit. It wasn't the best conditioning of Phil Heath. It was really good. It was probably second best on this stage. Maybe even better than Sean Rodens. They were in the same ballpark, I would say. I would say that Sean was a little bit sharper, but he wasn't more muscular. But his stomach was, uh, was fine. Phil's stomach was a disaster, as you can see right here. So Sean really took the advantage of the situation. He came in shape, he brought it, and he dethroned the Mr. Olympia seven times, Phil hit. And it was an amazing moment. It was an amazing moment. It was probably the top moment of the 2010s. So it, it, it sucks, it's sad to say that the, the, the best moment, the top moment in the year was when Phil Heath lost his title. And we call the, the whole era Phil Heath era. And the first moment that I mentioned was him winning it. But he deserved to lose. With this kind of stomach, he absolutely deserved to lose this, this year's Mr. Olympia. And it was a right step into the right direction for bodybuilding. Bodybuilders are not supposed to have this kind of bubble guts. And it was a message from the judges to the competitors. Finally, it happened and it was an amazing moment in bodybuilding history. Whether you think it was deserved for Phil to lose, whether you think it was politics or something else, it doesn't matter. We can all agree this was probably the top moment, the most surprising, the most interesting, one of the, at least, most interesting, one of the top moments and definitely one of the top five moments of the 2010s of this era that they just finished. And hopefully it's going to make sense in the future. Hopefully this was actually a direction. It wasn't just a coincidence. Hopefully bodybuilders are going to start paying more attention to their stomachs and we are actually going to start seeing more V-shaped rather than bottle-shaped, as Arnold said, physics. Unfortunately, because of the circumstances, Sean wasn't able to compete again. Had he competed, he would be two times Mr. Olympia today. So that's going to make your top five top moments from the past decade, but also have a couple of uh, honorable mentions. So, for example, this one right here, Brandon Curry winning the Mr. Olympia. Also this one, Chris Bumstead winning the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia and uh, making a new standard for the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia winner. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. If I forgot some uh, great moments from the past decade, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe. I also wanted to say thank you so much, guys, for uh, all the support that I got so far. We got to 20,000 subscribers. I wish you a happy new year and I wish you all the success in the next year and the next coming years. If you truly love bodybuilding, never stop doing it. Something will come up. You will find a way to, to succeed, to monetize your work. If you really love it, don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to reason. Just keep going. Just keep going. Be stupid. Be a fool. Just don't stop ever. It's going to be worth it. Trust me. 
So once again, guys, thank you so much for following, for watching. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. You're probably going to hear from me tomorrow as well. Since I'm a bodybuilder, I don't have a life. I'm going to make a videos for the New Year's Eve or something. Anyways, once again, thank you so much. All the best. Bye-bye.